Thank you very much indeed, Bertie. It's lovely to be back again to the lifeboat. Uh, it's good to share fellowship with my good friend and brother Bertie. Bertie and I text each other every Lord's Day morning uh, to assure one another that we're praying for one another. And it's good to be back to f uh, share fellowship with you and to, to, to see you. You are all looking well anyway. You haven't changed much since the last time I was here. Hope I haven't changed much. But anyway, but praise the Lord, it's good to be saved, isn't it? And it's good to be back and to, to share fellowship with you and to minister God's Word here this morning. I want you to turn with me, please, to a very familiar portion of the Word of God, and especially to uh, the time of year in which we're in. I want you to turn with me this morning to the first chapter of the, uh, the Gospel of Matthew, please. And we're in Gospel of Matthew this morning, chapter 1, and we want to commence to read from verse 18. Again, it's a very familiar portion of God's Word, and sometimes when we read a portion like this, we read it for the sake of reading it. But, you know, sometimes when we really take a moment and pray over that portion and, and have your ear open as to what the Lord would have to say, you do indeed see some wonderful truths uh, that the Lord would want us to know. Matthew 1, verse 18, we read, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken, by, spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. That yes, child of God this morning, yes indeed, we have arrived at this time of year again where this portion of the Word of God will be often read. Sadly, it's a portion of God's Word that is ignored for 11 months. And yet it's brought out of the box, as it were, on this time of the year. You know, child of God, the, this portion that we have read before us this morning is a portion for all the year round. It's the Word of God. We don't limit Calvary just to Easter. Neither should we limit Bethlehem just for Christmas. You know, child of God, this morning, we should never belittle what took place at Bethlehem. Let's never forget this morning, child of God, what happened on that night so long ago, listen, was one of the greatest, the greatest events that ever happened upon planet Earth. Just imagine for a moment this morning that if Christ never left heaven, if Christ never had left heaven, He could never have been made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God through Him. If Christ never had left heaven this morning, if He never had have left heaven, how on earth could He take the sinner's place? If Christ had never have left heaven on that night so long ago, well then how on earth could he make that once and for all sacrifice for, for sin? 
If Christ had never have left heaven and never came to that manger in Bethlehem so long ago, how then could sin be defeated? How then could the death be defeated? How then could the grave be defeated? How then could hell be defeated? How then could Satan be defeated? Thank God today that Christ Jesus came into the world. Bethlehem's babe became the Christ of Calvary. The one led in that manger so long ago was taken and nailed to that old rugged cross. What a moment it was, child of God. What a moment it was when Christ laid aside his priceless majesty for a pitiful manger. What a moment it was when he left aside the splendor and the glory for sin and the gloom. What a moment it was when Christ was prepared, who was everything, to become nothing. All because, child of God, all because of you and all because of me. And you know what sad today is? This what's sad today. This real truth has been forgotten. This real truth this morning has been forsaken. This truth this morning has been pushed aside because everybody wants Christmas, but they don't want the first six letters. They don't want Christ. What's a well without water? What's a book without pages? What's a field without grass? Tell me this, what's Christmas without Christ? Let's be careful, child of God, just just for a moment. Let's just be careful that we don't forget the true meaning of Christmas. You know, we can get so caught up in the festivities and we can get so caught up with many things and sometimes, child of God, we too can forget the true meaning. Do you remember in Luke chapter 2, do you remember the Lord Jesus at the age of 12? The tradition was in the Jewish way that he became the son of the law. You remember how at 12 years of age, Mary and Joseph took him to the temple and returned to Jerusalem. Do you remember that? And they were there, and you remember on their way home again, they supposing him to be in the company, went a day's journey and left Christ behind. Do you know there's a wee thought came into my head this week and maybe some Lord's Day morning I'm going to preach it. Do you know what I'm going to preach on? The day when Christ was lost. The day when Christ was lost. The day when Christ was left behind. The day when Christ was left out. So much so, child of God, that it actually took three days of frantic searching to find him again. And child of God, make sure you and I don't lose Christ. We own three ships. Did you know that? We believers own three ships. We have got our relationship. We have got our citizenship, and we possess fellowship. But make sure, child of God, unlike unlike so many, make sure we do not forget Christ. A young boy from Yorkshire was asked a question at a carol service. Did he really understand and know what Christmas was all about? His answer was, yes, I do. It's all about Santa Claus. It's all about parties. It's all about presents. The teacher asked him, what about the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you know what the young boy in Yorkshire said? Who's he? In London, there's an art gallery with a picture painted about the size of that wall. The height of it is, On that painting is a painting of Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria presenting a missionary from Africa. 
of Babel. The words of Queen Victoria to that young missionary from the south of Africa actually are inscribed up along the bottom of that picture. And this is what Queen Victoria said. The Scriptures, the Scriptures are the reason for Britain's greatness. We come this morning, child of God, very, very quickly, I want just to leave this thought with you that God has given to me. Are you and I in the place this morning where God can use us? Are you and I in the place this morning where God can depend upon us to fulfill some purpose or for some reason that God wants to do through you? Are you and I in the place this morning, child of God, where God can really use us? In the portion of God's Word this morning, four things God wants us to see very, very quickly. First of all, there's the people for the moment. God had to use, and God chose to use, two people to, pro to fulfill one of the greatest prophecies of the Old Testament. God needed two people to allow that prophetic promise to be fulfilled. The people for the moment. Luke's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 26, we read, And the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Listen. As God was about to fulfill this prophetic promise that He would send His only begotten Son into the world, God had His eye on two young people. Mary and Joseph. Two young people this morning, child of God, God knew He could rely on. Two young people that God could depend on. Two young people this morning, child of God, that God could see within their hearts the spirit of faithfulness. God saw something this morning in Joseph and in Mary, and I wonder, can he see it in my heart? Now, just imagine where they come from this morning. They came from Nazareth, the despised city of Galilee. You know what that teaches me this morning? If God wants to use you this morning, child of God, God doesn't God hasn't his eyes this morning on your mansion. God doesn't have his eyes on your motors. And God doesn't have your eyes on your money. He came, they came from the despised city of Nazareth. They were the lowest of the low in society. Do you remember what Nathaniel said to the Lord Jesus in John 1, 46? Can any good thing, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Do you know what the word Nazareth means? Yes, we all see it this morning as that despised, that forsaken place in Galilee. But do you know what the word Nazareth means? It means sanctified. That's what Nazareth means. It means sanctified. Do you know what the word sanctified means? It means set apart for God. Oh, it might have been despised in the eyes of the world, but it wasn't despised with God. Yet from this despised, forsaken place, God saw it fit this morning. God saw it fit that here, dwelling in this forsaken place, 
two people that God had his eye upon. God wasn't depending upon where they lived. God was depending upon how they lived. God wasn't depending upon their occupation. God wasn't depending upon their background. No. You read through the Scriptures this morning, child of God. Listen to me. You read through the Scriptures this morning. You'll find the most catalog of the most unlikely characters God ever used. When I think of Mary and Joseph this morning, child of God, you know, this thought came into my mind coming up this morning. It's not this morning... If you know enough, the matter is, are you low enough? It's not do you know enough that attracts you to God. It's if you're low enough. God bypasses so many people. Why? Because God resisteth the proud. You take a look through your scriptures this morning and you'll find the most unlikeliest characters God used. You remember Moses, a man slow of speech. You remember Jephthah, the son of an harlot. You remember the disciples, unlearned and ignorant men. People this morning God set apart what about W.P. Nicholson? Many were saved through him. What about William Mullen, a tramp and a drunkard? Yet God saved him and used him mightily. What about Ivan Thompson? Many of us remember Ivan. A rascal. But yet God saved him and God used him mightily. But here's the $60 million question this morning, child of God. Are you and I in that place? Are you and I in that position this morning where God says, yes, I can use him. Yes, I can use her. Or has God to pass us by? God doesn't care about the type of style or background we come in, because I'll tell you something now, friends. God's not looking out for the beautiful. He's not looking out for the haughty. And He's not looking out for the rich. No, He's not looking for the beautiful. He's looking for the faithful. God's not looking out for the haughty. God is looking out for the humble. God's not looking out for the rich. God's looking out for the humble. When we think of the people for the moment that God chose, do you remember when the Lord Jesus Christ was born, eight days after he was born, they brought him to the temple? Do you know something? Mary and Joseph were so poor. They were almost what we would describe a penniless couple that had no healthy bank balance. They were almost a penniless couple that all they could bring to offer was the poorest of the poorest sacrifices. That's all they could offer. Two turtle doves and two young pigeons was all they could afford to offer. They couldn't afford the lamb. All they could afford was the, the poorest of the poorest sacrifices. But yet this was the couple God used. Here's the challenge that comes to my heart. Now let's be honest, child of God. Are you and I humble enough for God to use? Are you and I this morning in that place where God could say, yes, I want him? Are you in that place, dear, where God can say of you, yes, I want her? The people for the moment. But then secondly, God wants us to see the possibility 
of being misunderstood. Look at verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this way, was as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Do you know something, child of God? There's something God has to show us. To be in the center of God's will. To be in the place where God wants you to be can be the place where nearly everyone will misunderstand you. When you are where God wants you to be, when you're in the very center of God's will, listen, God won't wrap you up in cotton wool. God will be faithful. It doesn't mean, child of God, everyone will understand. Here's Joseph this morning, he spouse to Mary. News has reached that uh, Joseph's ears, she's with child. You know, child of God, this man had a deal with doubt this morning. Sometimes we're taken up too much with Mary, and we forget about Joseph. But the poor wee creator had a deal with a lot in this case. He had a deal with doubt. This wee girl that he loved, this wee girl that he cherished, she is now with child, and remember, child of God, he hadn't the word of God at this stage. The whole thing was unexplained. Until now, child of God, all he had was Mary's word. common sense, and on the natural sense, how could she be with child any other way apart from being with another man? You know, child of God, when God draws you into a place and God draws you into a position, it doesn't mean this morning you won't be attacked with cursed doubts. It won't be too long when you're in the center of God's will and you're in the place where God wants you that you're not being attacked with the snare of unbelief. He had a deal not only with doubts this morning, but listen to me, he had a deal with dangers. There was a whole danger connected to this. Listen to me. To be where God wants you to be doesn't come without its dangers. In the New Testament times, if, if the unfaithfulness part of the betrothed was treated as adultery, and the only punishment was the punishment of death, you know, it was very easy to read the wrong message. Mary was with child. The danger was that many may read into the wrong message. And unfaithfulness on the part of the betrothed was treated as adultery and punishment by death. But even though this is the very place where God wanted them to be. You know, child of God, we're all dangerous of doing one thing. You know what we're all dangerous of doing, child of God? We're all dangerous of doing what people could have done in this day. We're all very dangerous of jumping to conclusions. Some of us remember we said, Murray. Do you remember we said? From drinking figs to ham and eggs, from a Johnny Walker to a gospel talker. We said. After we said, Murray got saved. He run up a slate in a pub and said, Murray says, there's no way I can ever invite that man who I, to a gospel mission until I have every penny paid. And we said, to make an example of himself, he paid every penny back, but he never went through the front door. He used to sneak through the back door that nobody would see him going in. And he was in every Friday night. Every Friday night, said went in and paid a bit off the slate. 
And as he was coming out one night, some old tight bow, walking his dog, and seeing Sid coming out, I knew more you were only a bluffer. And you know what they've done with him? They kicked him out of the assembly. And Sid Murray was doing what a whole lot of these old boys would need to be doing, paying their bills. And they all, just because they saw we Sid sneaking out, oh, Sid's back in the drink, Sid's back in the drink. Sid wasn't back in the drink at all. Sid was doing what every believer should be doing, making sure their bills are up to date. There's a pile of boys carrying big Bibles, but they have bigger bills high hanging from them. That's unpaid. You know, I believe there's nobody who believes more in the shoot to kill policy than some Christians. Shoot first and ask questions later. You know, child of God, I love verse 19. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. You know, listen, Joseph didn't know what was going on. Joseph couldn't understand. Mary is now with child. Do you know what Mary, Joseph didn't do? He didn't go about the country blabbering. He took her in and he put her away privily. You know, child of God, listen. When God calls you to do something and when God calls you to somewhere and God brings you into a place where he can use you, listen, there's times when the hard, difficult times comes and, friend, when doubts come and when misunderstandings come, you know, there's one thing we must always do. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not onto your own understanding. My goodness me, your own understanding was enough to drive you to suicide. Trust in the Lord. When everything seems to be crumbling around you, and when they're going, yet stop it, Lord, you brought me here. You sent me here. Lord, you've called me to do this. And there's all the thing you can do and if you have got the word of the Lord that you should be doing what you're doing, friend, that's enough. And all you've got to do is hold on and trust the Lord. Amen. God never fails. Amen. But being in the center of God's will will never exclude you from problems. It'll never exclude you from doubts. It'll never exclude you from worries. It'll never exclude you from doubts. And it'll never exclude you from the attacks of the enemy. But you be reminded, God is faithful. And God will never bring you to a place, and God will never ask you to do a thing unless His grace will be there to sustain you and help you. The people for the moment, the possibility of being misunderstood, but look at the promise that was magnificent. Verse 20, verse 20, but while he thought on these things, boys, can't you see Joseph going to bed scratching his head? You can see the young man going, wondering what is happening, wondering what's going on. But, uh, but it says there, but while he thought on these things, when his mind was in turmoil, when doubts and cares and worries had their grip on his heart, God moved in. But while he thought in these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not. Boys, I love that, you know. Before he explained anything, Joseph, fear not. Maybe there's somebody here this morning, that's just two words you need to hear. Fear not. Child of God, when everything seems to be out of control, God's in control. You and I may not understand the pattern behind God's plan, 
but God is in control. Fear not to take unto thee, Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Do you know what makes this a promise that is magnificent? Because this is the truth of the virgin birth. I want to make one thing absolutely publicly clear from this platform. Man had absolutely nothing to do with the conception of Jesus Christ in the womb of Mary. Totally virgin born. That which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost of the Holy Ghost. And thank God for the blessed virgin birth this morning. It's all of God. All of God. Friend, this was all fulfilling prophecy. 750 years beforehand. Isaiah 7, 14. They, uh, she shall, a ver behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. Aye, a virgin shall be with child. Sure, how could a virgin be without me? With, be, sorry, how could a virgin be with child except God was in it? God was in it all. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted as God with us. Friend, I'm sure that was music to Joseph's ears. He realizes that his fears, his suspicions, are all groundless. And this was a wonderful promise. Verse 21, And thou she shall bring forth a son. That speaks of his humanity and shall call his name Jesus, that declares his deity. And he shall save his people from their sins, that declares his destiny, because his destiny was for the cross. And why the cross? Because the cross is where he had to die in order to save his people from their sins. The promise that was magnificent. But finally, I want to close, perhaps, with a very important slant. Verse 25, the purity that was marvelous, and knew her not until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Do you know something, child of God? Purity is nearly a thing of the past. And he knew her not. Do you know, one of the greatest conditions, one of the greatest qualifications, if you want the Lord to use you, is the qualifications of purity. If there's one text of Scripture this morning young people needs to adhere to, sorry, not only young people, all people needs to adhere to, is this one. You were not until she brought forth her firstborn son. Let me make one thing absolutely clear. I want to contradict and I want to challenge the universities of today. I want to contradict and I want to challenge the schools of today. They teach a lesson called safe sex. Do you know something? There's no such thing as safe sex before marriage. It's sinful sex. Sex before marriage is sinful. It's not safe. Do you know what I was reading the other day in a magazine? In 30 years' time, in 30 years' time, there's that many children with different fathers. 
In 30 years' time, did you know that five children out of ten children will be marrying half-sisters and half-brothers, and they'll not even know it? That's why God says through his servant Timothy, 1 Timothy 5, 22, keep thyself pure. Keep away from anything that would hinder or mar our relationship, our fellowship, or our testimony in Christ. Listen, let's grab hold this morning of the two qualities that Mary and Joseph possessed. That God saw the reason as to why he could rely on them and depend upon them as a channel to bring his son into the world. Do you know what the two qualities are? The two qualities are, child of God, and I wonder, do you and I possess them? Humility and purity. Purity comes not only within what I have just mentioned, purity comes within the whole areas of our lives. Our dealings with others tell me this. Are they honest? You're only a bluffer and a hypocrite if you're not. There's too many boys today and they're running about with Bibles as big as the suitcases and they wouldn't pay their mother. And I hope there's nobody like that here. You see, child of God, listen. God had a plan. God had a purpose upon two young people of a despised city. And they gave themselves to God to fulfill that purpose. You and I have only one life. Are you and I in the place? Are you and I in the position where God and God alone can take us and use us. May our prayer this morning be that of our closing hymn, Have thine own way, Lord.